Welcome to Secrets to Win Big with Arjun Sen. Recently, I was traveling to Cincinnati and two things happened before I even started my day that would shape the rest of the day and I'm still talking about it. Let me talk about the second thing next. I went for breakfast to a regional restaurant and everything on their menu was very fancy. So I talked to the server, Anastasia, and I requested her. I said, you know, I'm not that hungry this morning. Can I just have one egg, one toast, and some coffee? 16-year-old kid, amazing energy, looked at me and said, sir, are you sure that's all you want? I'm like, yes, ma'am. She brought me my eggs or egg, a toast and coffee. Her energy and enthusiasm was positively contagious. She kept asking anything else. I'm like, no ma'am, that's it. So I worked on my laptop, got a few emails done and then I requested for the check. Anastasia looked at me and said, sir, that's on me. I'm like, what do you mean it's on you? She said, you did not order enough food for me to charge you. What baffled me was this 16 year old felt empowered to make the decision right there without even talking to a manager or anybody else. Then after that, we got into a little bit of an argument because they were cash free. I wanted her to at least charge me $1 so I can tip. So finally I said, is it okay if I gave you $20 in tips in cash? Finally, we had an agreement and she had a big smile on her face and said, you made my day. And in my mind, I said, no girl, you made my day. But my morning did not start that way. I needed Anastasia to reverse what had happened just before. I was in a national hotel chain. Okay? I showered in the morning. I don't know about you, but when I come out of a shower, I'm on an autopilot mode. I open the door, grab the towel with my eyes nearly closed. You know, I put the towel on my face and I start wiping myself. Right. But that day, something stopped me. Somewhere in a peripheral vision or something, I saw something in the towel that freaked me and I just held the towel back. And there was dried blood marks. Yes, dried blood marks on the white towel. I don't do body fluids like you. And the very fact it was that close to me freaked me out. I threw it on the ground. Then I look suspiciously and cautiously at the other towels because they were accomplices. They came with this towel. They are all together, contaminated. Somehow, without going into details, I drive myself. I'm out of that room. I took a picture of the towels as I left them on the floor. I rushed to the front desk and tell Jenny, the attendant, this is what happened. The two words she said freaked me out. Oh, okay. Is O the right response? And is okay what I needed to hear? When I kept looking at her, she said, sorry, that happened to you. I needed little more emotion. I needed a little bit of dramatic because think, there's a crime scene in my room, a towel with blood on it is on the floor. The accomplices are around it. She needed to go out there and check and validate and at least feel what I felt to make me feel recognized, appreciated. She didn't. When I realized that I'm not communicating with her, there's a wavelength challenge. I asked for her manager. And she took time on a torn piece of paper to write 
the email address of the manager and said the manager's card does not exist. I've emailed the manager twice over the last two weeks, have not got a response. You know, that morning, as I reflected on both, what I realized that things happen. In life, there are situations and opportunities, but every time we have two choices. In case of Anastasia, she chose the first option, which is to leave empowered. She left as the boss, as the person who defined my life. I felt empowered because of her. And in case of Jenny, left employed. She didn't do anything to get fired. She said, oh, okay. She said, sorry. She gave me the manager. It's like, what else do you want me to do, boss? And maybe as she was thinking, she was going through a process in her mind by saying, I do this for this. If there's electricity problem, you know, remote problem, blood, blood on the towel, not registering. Default answer. Sorry. But before I go overboard in my praise for Anastasia, she deserves it. And my criticism of Jenny, she deserves it too. Let's look at why these things happen. In my experience, what I've seen, it happens because of culture. Culture starts at the top. It's all about the culture and the environment we create in an organization. If we create an organization where we tell every person, you dumb urgent, this is what you will do. When you'll do it, let me tell you how you will do it. We give them a PowerPoint of 10 steps. A customer service interaction must always include. We even create a poster bigger than life right in front as if this person is dumb. You always need to look at by saying one, two, three. It does not work. In fact, what it does is creates an environment where the team member in their mind feel I'm being watched. I'm being monitored, I'm being measured. And in that particular environment, it's much easier to leave employed, not empowered. I want to share a simple story, which most of you know, but my grandma used to tell me, so let me indulge and relive my connection with my grandma to tell you the story again. In this village, there was this massive, big elephant. And as the kids would go to school, they would be amused to see that elephant was tied to this tiny post or pole with this simple rope. The parents used to be worried. The kids thought it was funny. And one day, one of the parents asked the elephant's handler, is that safe with all the kids? The handler said, yeah. Parents said, why? How? Handler said, when this elephant was a kid, and I was very fortunate that my dad used to train the elephant, so we grew up all together in a family. We had the same post, the same rope. The elephant was tiny and tried to walk away. Tried a lot, but couldn't. As the elephant grew, maybe it was a year and a half mark, but somewhere, I remember exactly vividly, the elephant stopped trying. The elephant always believed since then till today. That rope is the limiting factor in my life. That's what happens when we create a culture of measures, efficiency, monitoring, watching you, just numbers. Instead of doing that, why don't we just break that rope, tear it, and empower every person 
every day to be effective, not efficient, in connecting to every people every time. Let us ask how you can and how will wow one more person. And that, I think, becomes very important in this journey. It is the wowing that defines relationships. So at the end, just remember, everything we do, everything I do today, everything you today, you have two choices. Do you want to do the right thing and leave employed? Or do you want to take a little risk, go on a little uncharted path and leave empowered? Brand connections, relationships, and even on everyday life happens when we leave empowered.